So once the meshing is complete, then we can go ahead into the setup tab. So the setup is where we put in all the boundary conditions and all the physics of the problem. So we want it to be a transient simulation so that we can see how the flow pattern changes with time as the rotor moves and uh, many other things. So first of all, to start with the solver, I'll choose a pressure based solver because I'd be using water as the fluid. So if you want to simulate say a wind turbine in which you have the air, you might want to use the density based solver because air is a compressible fluid. For the time, I'd select the transient solver and I'll not choose the gravity here. For the models, I'll choose the K epsilon turbulent model for the uh, flow domain because um, uh, for these particular type of problems, you can't be very sure if they would be in the laminar regime. So it's better off with the turbulent zone if you are certain that your velocities are not very small. So for the materials, I would replace the air with water. So to do that, I'll go here, choose the water liquid and copy it and for the rotor i'll stay with the aluminium in the cell zone conditions this part is very important so first of all we'll replace the air with water and if you choose for the part rotor the material is aluminium and then we want to take on these frame motion and the mesh motion module so the basic difference between these two is that the in the mesh motion uh, as the name suggests that uh, while the simulation or while the solving of problem the mesh would also move so it, this is like a, a dynamic mesh but it's not exactly a dynamic mesh while the frame motion says that uh, the geometry or the frame of this particular part which is part rotor would move with a particular velocity so frame motion is not, not directly linked to the physics of the problem as, as much as the mesh motion is so frame motion is very useful if you're trying to display your results somewhere or you have a conference where you want to present your results so on that particular uh, cases you want, might want to go with the frame motion so that the frame could also be seen moving while you do the simulation so if you remember well uh, we put the axis of rotation being 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 and it's also very crucial that these motions uh, especially for the frame and mesh you choose it with respect to the part fluid that is the surrounding domain and uh, We'll choose it to be the rotational velocity omega to be 5 radian per second. I'll copy it to the mesh motion and I'll make sure that it is exactly the same that the motion is with respect to the air domain, uh, the water domain, and the rot rotation axis is 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and the rotation speed is 5 radian per second. So once that is done, I could go to the boundary condition for the inlet uh, boundary condition. I can because if you remember that this particular domain it's 5 meter per second. So accordingly, I can choose a velocity, say 2 meter per second, which says that uh, without the rotor, it would take around 2.5 seconds to pass through it. So that gives some idea about uh, for how much time you should run your transient simulation. And finally, for the rotor wall, because these walls are moving, so you have to give in the appropriate boundary condition for the rotational 5 meter per second and 0 0.9 comma 0 0.9 as the axis of rotation. So once that is done, I'll go to the solution method and change it to coupled. And for the turbulent kinetic energy and dissipation, I'll use a second order of wind scheme and the same for the transient formulation. So I, I can now initialize the solution. So I choose the inlet boundary for the initialization with the x velocity being two meter per second. And for, for the simulation presentation for the videos, you can auto save your calculation every after few time steps. So I'll choose five time steps. And I'll, so because this is a transient simulation, which means that for the physical time, there are some simulation or some time steps in within that physical time. So I will choose 0 0.01 sec second for the physical time step. And within this uh, time step, there would be some iterations that are, uh, you can decide on the number. So I would say that I, I want a total of 100 seconds or at least I would say like 500, uh, 500 time steps. So that would mean I want to solve this problem for 500 multiplied by 0 0.01, which is five seconds. And for every time step, for every of these 500 time steps, there would be 20 iteration within that time step. So there would be 
a total of maximum 10,000 iterations. So depending on uh, the computational capabilities of your machine, you can uh, change between these numbers. You can also alter the time step, but it's uh, wise if you start with a very low value of time step because the higher the time step, the more unstable your results could be. So I'll start with the calculation of solution. So I can first display you that uh, the solutions are actually getting converged and then I'll pause the video until this uh, whole calculations are being done. So now you can see that uh, there is this exclamation mark which says the solution is converged. So this would be more or less the case with you if you start doing this simulation straight away. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video until uh, these calculations are finished because it's going to take a while for them to be finished off. So I've stopped the simulation at around four seconds because it's taking quite a long time to simulate even for this particular time step. So one of the things that I could have done was to have a higher value of time step rather than 0 0.01, but that's not the case here. So uh, for the demonstration purpose, I think four seconds should be quite a good time. So once that is done, you can simply close the, uh, the ANSYS module and we can come back here once this is closed. So now what we have, what we should have is a result for four seconds of simulations and I'll reset the results tab. And then we can go in and check out what the results actually look like. So this is where the creativity could come into picture. And as you can see that uh, this is all well, this is actually at the final value of time step. So we have a lot of time steps here. So this is, this comes because you were uh, auto saving your solution after every particular time step. So we will go to zero second and that, and there are a lot of results that you can visualize here, but my favorites are usually the vectors or the streamline, or you can also get the contours for the velocities. So I'll start with the vector actually. So let's say, we can see the vectors in the fluid domain and you can click apply. So now, first of all, they look very nasty here. So what we can do is we can change the sampling for a reduction from, we can decide how many points do we want the vectors at. And as you can see that at 100, it looks a little bit sparse. So what we can do is we can change the number to be, so let's say 500, let's see. So now this should be a pretty good representation of the overall flow field. And then you can have a look around and see what the flow, what the motion of the router does with the uh, the flow field when it reduces the vortex as it should be expected. So this is one way in which you can visualize the flow field. And if you think that at zero seconds, the length of the vector is not big enough, then you can change the symbol size accordingly. So let's say, let's make it a three. So that would make it twice the bigger that they are now because uh, the velocities keep changing and that's why the, the length of these vectors, they also reflect the velocity magnitude. So there are a lot of ways in which you can uh, extract your results. So one of the ways in which I like to do it is in called as the time step animation. So what it does basically it changes your uh, time and create the videos out of it, where, which you can present later. So uh, there is a feature called insertion of a text. So this is useful in the transient simulation because you want to, to know what time it's actually being played. So you can embed the auto text and you can put a time value and you simply click apply. So while you are running these animations, you know what time step are we talking about. So in this particular case, you can start the animation and you can see that the router actually starts to move, which is very good for the presentation cases. And we had given the particular velocity of five radian per second. So it moves according to that and the flow field it changes because of the motion of the rotor. So this is a very simple demonstration problem for the case of uh, for the case where it involves the motion of the blade such as this and you can also modify the geometry of this uh, very simple rectangular model to involve and you can involve the blades here and see how the motion would actually look like then.
on the same way you can also plot the contours of the velocity for example so you can go to the symmetry one or symmetry two which is basically the front and the back side of the plane and you can plot the velocity contours so basically uh, you can also plot on the similar basis you can plot the pressure and uh, the other fields so this is the general idea of how you can use these uh, how can you how you can use the frame motion and the mesh motion to simulate the case of a rotor i hope uh, you found it useful and you can imply it to much bigger problems and problems of practical significance and if this video helps you in any way please like the video and if you are struggling with any particular part please feel free to drop a comment or an email to me i will try to reply it asap and if you want to keep uh, keep yourself updated about the future videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And I hope once again that uh, you have a good day and you found it useful. Thanks for watching the video. See you later.